It's an early evening of April 13th, 2022. Just 120 kilometers from the shore, Ukrainian land radar detects some large vessel. After carefully verifying and analyzing the data, Ukrainians come to a surprising conclusion. On the 49th day of the full-scale Russian invasion, they finally track something big. The target is correctly identified as the warship Moskva, the flagship of the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet, which performs its duties as a part of the invading force. Prior to this, cruiser mostly carried out reconnaissance missions and served as the main air defense force and command center for the Black Sea Fleet. Now, Moskva is alone in this sea, but even far from the Russian-controlled ports in annexed Crimea, the ship command is confident that no danger exists, as no Ukrainian Navy assets can ever match the Russian cruiser. The ship is defended by a long-range S-300F air defense system, two older short-range SA-8 air defense systems, combined with one twin AK-130 twin barrel gun and six AK-630 rotary cannons. It's also armed with 16 Vulcan anti-ship missiles, torpedo tubes and anti-submarine mortars. In 2016, Moskva did undergo a modernization that was supposed to bring it to the level of any other modern cruiser. Mineral U radar that detected the warship is part of Ukrainian-made Neptune coastal defense system. The system has a maximum range of 300 kilometers. Neptune's design is based on the Soviet H-35 subsonic anti-ship missile with substantially improved range, targeting, and electronics. A single missile weighs 870 kilograms, of which 150 kilograms is a warhead. Around 4 p.m., the order to attack Moskva is received by launcher crew. Two missiles hit right in the middle of the ship, not only successfully evading all the air defenses, but also penetrating and exploding right inside the hull. After a brief shock and situation assessment, the crew starts combating fire and the ship accelerates changing its course and trying to break the distance. Simultaneously, four other ships rush to Moskva from different directions, including a Russian tugboat that tells Ukrainians the attack was successful. On the board of the ship, despite the crew's actions, the ammunition catches fire, which results in rapid detonation and even more heavy damage. The only known photos made from the tugboat show that the ship has a heavy listing and the absence of life rafts indicates that the still alive crew members had to abandon the ship. Russians, however, continued the attempts to tow the cruiser to the port. At 1 a.m. on April 14th, however, the ship broadcasted SOS for the last time, and around 3 a.m. Moskva sunk, according to the report of the Romanian ship that was rescuing the crew. Any further investigation to identify why Russian ships suddenly became so vulnerable to Ukrainian attack leads us to a source of various incredibility. At the time when the video is recorded, Ukraine did not officially disclose any details of the operation, but journalists reported that this particular photo shows one of the Neptune missiles that sank Moskva. Russia officially explained the loss of the ship by the fire of an unspecified origin that occurred on board and caused a subsequent detonation of ammunition and fatal damage to the hull. Then, during the storm, the ship sank while being towed by a tugboat to Sevastopol. However, the only known photos of the ship show no signs of storm. The international community agreed with the version of Ukrainian forces sinking the warship with two Neptune missiles. Another controversial topic is the involvement of drones. The skies above the Black Sea, especially its western part of it, often host NATO reconnaissance drones, such as MQ-9 and MQ-4. It's quite likely that the intelligence is shared with Ukrainian military, so the approximate location of the Moskva was not a secret. Note, however, that it's rather a speculation than a fact, because there is no evidence that NATO drones were directly involved in the Moskva sinking. Some sources also explain the ship's vulnerability by the Ukrainian drone attack that distracted or even damaged raiders prior to the missile strike. There is also no evidence of that, and the journalists that published the above-mentioned photo of the Neptune missile that reportedly sunk Moskva also reported that the Ukrainian Bayraktar TB2 drones did not perform any operations on April 14th due to the dense clouds. If we dive deeper, 
Some extra details may be found on a technical report about Moskva's condition, dated February 10, 2022. The report begins with the high grades for January crew exercises. Right after that, however, it mentions that the supply agencies were not ready to perform their duties at the date of the report, but the decision was made to reschedule their evaluation as if the ship does not need any extra components. This information will be important when we will get to the list of missing parts that were supposed to be supplied and or replaced. Next, it's reported that the state of armament and military equipment is satisfactory. The following details, however, contradict this statement. For example, the digital computing complex for anti-air missiles does not function in automatic mode that factors in the location of the ship. The long-range air defense system S-300F has trouble locking on some targets. The space reconnaissance and target designation system does not work properly, introducing an error of 10 degrees. Both SA-8 short-range air defense systems have serious issues with antennas, preventing them from functioning properly. Multiple jamming systems cannot rotate, rendering them useless against specific targets. AK-130 has multiple leaks, and the hydraulic motor that powers the whole system is broken. One of the AK-630s has a malfunctioning control unit, and this is just the beginning. Moskva's main radar, which is supposed to identify marine and air targets, such as anti-ship missiles, interferes with a satellite communication station. It also requires a number of repairs and the replacement of multiple components to work in all available channels. Therefore, it's very likely that this radar was turned off before and during the attack, which made the ship completely blind in hostile waters. According to the emergency procedures, the crew had to immediately turn on the radar after the attack, which most likely disrupted any communication with higher command and other ships of the Black Sea Navy. Therefore, the last thing that Moskva officers did report to their headquarters were explosions of unknown origin. This incomplete information most likely became the basis of the Russian version of events. Moreover, the report lists over a dozen of other issues with smaller communication equipment, which can be the reason for disorganized firefighting procedures that subsequently failed. As if it's not enough, all turbine generators that power the ship were used for way longer than they expected by manufacturers. Two of the main generators that were designed to work for 2500 and 5000 hours were actually used for 28191 hour and 28372 hours respectively. The report mentions that they can be turned on only in a case of emergency, which means that most of the time Moskva actually had to move at a half of its cruise speed, if not less. The maneuverability of the ship was also severely limited, because turning the vessel for more than 20 degrees caused delays in the controls. Multiple cooling pumps and small boilers are reported to be completely rusted through. Even the bakery oven is missing some replacement components, which resonates with the fact that suppliers were unable to manufacture and deliver replacement parts for all the equipment. In conclusion, Moskva was not supposed to even leave the repair site, but it was deliberately put into a combat situation by a remarkably incompetent command. This does not change the fact that Ukrainian defenders skillfully completed their task, but the Russian overconfidence was the main reason why the ship became a vulnerable target. Similarly, with dropping the paratroopers in Hostomel, about which I already made a video, Russia expected a complete absence of resistance from Ukraine, believing in the inferiority of their enemy. And they paid a price for such a mistake. According to Lithuanian defense minister, there were 485 crew members aboard, including 66 officers. He also said that the Turkish ship saved only 54 crew members at 2 a.m. local time. Russia stated that only one sailor from the Moskva was killed and 27 were missing while 396 crew members were rescued. In November 2022, a Russian court in Crimea acknowledged the deaths of further 17 sailors, mostly conscripts. The real number of killed in action presumably will not be disclosed at least till the end of the war. However, the fact that the damage to the ship was severe enough to abandon it shortly after the missile strike 
implies that there must be significant casualties among the crew members. In fear of losing any other military vessels, the Russian command had to implement a risk-averse strategy that limited their control over the sea. After Moscow's sinking, the Russian Navy mostly stays around annexed Crimea and in the southern part of the Black Sea. On February 24th, the first day of Russian invasion, Moscow was one of the ships that attacked Snake Island. The flagship of the Russian Navy hailed the island's garrison over the radio and demanded their surrender, receiving the legendary phrase from Ukrainian border guard in response. Yeah. 